you should have a really good idea about how the different Vagrant commands work now. You can do Vagrant up to start or resume a box. You can do Vagrant destroy to completely kill a box and remove everything about it. Or you could do Vagrant suspend or halt to temporarily, temporarily pause or power off the box. Now, just a quick clarification for Vagrant destroy. If say you had a database on a box, if this isn't clear, the database is stored inside of your Vagrant box and we'll get there in later in the lessons. But if you did Vagrant destroy and it's gone from your virtual box provider here, you're not going to be able to get that database back. You can't run Vagrant up and the database will still be there. You've essentially killed off the machine. If you ran Vagrant suspend or halt though, and then did Vagrant up, you're just powering off or pausing the machine. So the stuff stored on the box would still be there. Just something to keep in mind. Only do destroy when you're completely done with a project. Now, let's talk a little bit more about providers. Oh, real quick, you'll see here the when you ran Vagrant up, dot Vagrant was created, which was just a uh, part of running Vagrant up. You could just get ignore these and never go inside them. All right. With that being said, let's talk about these providers here. So we already knew virtual boxes are default. But what if we wanted to do custom settings, or maybe we wanted to change this to something like VMware, assuming you had that set up? That's way beyond the scope of what we're talking about, but I will show you some ways that you can do some additional provider settings. Now, you'll see here this syntax, if you don't know Ruby, looks real similar to the syntax at the, at the start of the configuration. And so if you can read this, the same way we're communicating to config, we're going to be able to communicate to VB. So we could be like VB special feature I want equals two or three or whatever. And that's the way we're going to be able to customize our virtual or our provider a little bit. So let's hop over here and show you guys a real example of this. So I'm going to go here and Obviously, we never want to go or mess with the settings of the virtual machine. Everything's through vagrant commands. But for purposes here, the default memory looks like it's 384. And we're using two CPUs of eight available for my machine. What if I wanted to increase that because I am sick of sluggish performance or, or whatever? Maybe you have like a really big database or something down the road. What you can do is just the same way that we're passing stuff like in or items like we were before we could do, we could do like this for memory and I'm just copying and pasting here and we can say like four CPUs. There's a whole bunch of settings and options reference the official docs for that. But now what I can do is I want this to change. I want it to be a little bit beefier for a virtual machine. I'm going to close this. And I kind of butchered this in our last lesson, but you can run Vagrant Reload to reboot the machine. But if you also run Vagrant Reload, it will, it will reread the provider settings as well. So now if I run, take note of this, we are just as a recall, recall system. We have 384 megabytes and two CPUs. We're beefing it up. So I'm going to run v Vagrant Reload. It's going to power down the machine and then re-up it. It's a nice little reboot. But while it did that, it also went through these provider settings and reapplied the new ones. So after this is done running, I should be able to open this up. So we'll go back to the settings, click system. And now we can see we've manually increased our memory. And we're now using four CPUs. So now this box is just a little bit faster and beefier than before. Like all virtualization, there's a balance to it. I always use the defaults, but as you kind of go on, you'll learn your own settings for your own computer.